Welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. So today I wanted to take a look at some of the basics of JS8 Call. Uh, might help some of the new guys out that's just discovering the software. Now this video is not intended to help you get your rig set up uh, with your sound card and the software, uh, but more of how to operate the software once you have your rig configured. So the first thing we want to do is take a look under File and Settings. Now, under the General tab and the Station tab, we want to look at these messages down here. So the CQ message uh, is what will be transmitted when you click on the CQ button. Uh, so you can enter in here what you want. I just use CQ, CQ, and my four-digit uh, or four-character grid square uh, in my CQ message. Uh, the next line down is your reply message. So if you reply to a station calling CQ by clicking the reply button, the message here in this box is what will be ready to transmit out. Uh, and then your QTH and your QTC as well. Uh, so if you click one of those buttons, those will get auto-populated uh, with the information that you've typed in here. One other thing we need to take a look at is under reporting. Uh, you want to make sure that you, uh, right here under Network Services, you check this box to enable spotting. The first two boxes you shouldn't have to worry about. You should be able to leave them at default. The last uh, line here is your APRS passcode. I'll leave a link to a website where you can get your own APRS passcode. My passcode is not going to work uh, with your call sign because they are dependent upon the call sign that's entered. Uh, but this is important because if there's a portable operator out there and he sends out his grid and your station hears it and you have this information here entered, then you can go ahead, or your station rather, will go ahead and forward that information through the internet to the APRS services. Uh, so it's a real help to the entire community when you go ahead and set this information up. So once that's done, we can just go ahead and click OK. So let's start right up here in the top left corner. Uh, you can select the frequency that you're working on. Now I've got a friend that's going to be joining me shortly to help me demo some of this stuff. Uh, so we're going to stay on two meters, but you have these other frequencies uh, that you can work with as well. Seems like right now 40 meters is probably the most popular band. All right, so let's take a look at the eight buttons over on the right-hand side of the screen. The first uh, here is the RX button. As long as it's green, your uh, software is ready to receive and decode the messages. Uh, if you turn that off, then uh, you will not be decoding anything as it comes in. So we'll leave that to own. Just to the right of that, you'll see the text, uh, the transmit box. That will turn red anytime your rig goes into transmit. Next to that is the tune button. Uh, that should be self-explanatory, but if you click it, it will send out a tone while you're getting your rig tuned up and ready to go. Just to the right of that is the log button uh, so that you can log the QSOs that you have. On the bottom row, uh, first button we've got here is the spot button. Uh, if it's blue, it's on. If it's gray, then it is turned off. I like to leave that on, and that goes back to reporting to the APRS service and to PSK Reporter. The next button here is the heartbeat button. Now, currently, I have mine uh, set to off. Uh, click on it. When it turns blue, then it's turned on. With it turned on, it, your station will automatically send out a heartbeat uh, I believe every 30 minutes is the default, and you can change that in the settings. But when your heartbeat is sent out, any station that can hear you and is in auto mode will automatically reply and give you a signal-to-noise uh, number that you can see how well they're hearing your station. You can also right-click on this and click Send Heartbeat Now. Now, when my radio goes into transmit mode here in just a couple of seconds, uh, you'll see that this button turns red. And I don't expect a reply right now. I've got a friend that will be joining me shortly to help me demo a few things. 
uh, but currently he's not on the air, so I don't expect any acknowledgments from my heartbeat. But if there was a station out there that could hear me, uh, then it would auto-acknowledge and give me my signal-to-noise report. The next button we have here is the auto button. When your auto is turned on and your station hears uh, heartbeats and some other commands and requests, it will automatically respond to those. Uh, when I'm in a QSO, I will make sure that auto and heartbeat is turned off. But if I leave my rig uh, and, and maybe walk out of the shack for a little while, most of the time I will turn the heartbeat off leave auto mode on and my rig on. Uh, that way, if someone else sends me a message or a directed command, my rig will go ahead and auto respond to them. The last button here is the cell call button. And I've actually done an entire video on that. I'll leave a link to that right up at the top. Uh, you should definitely go check it out and learn how to use the cell call button. Uh, but it's a, I think it takes about uh, five or six minutes in that video to kind of explain it really well. So go check out that video to figure out what the cell call button does. All right, so let's take a look at the main body here. Uh, this window over to the right is the band activity window. And you'll see uh, messages and QSOs showing up here as they're happening. This box here in the middle is where your outgoing and incoming messages will show up. Uh, now they'll show up here really under three conditions. If you're directly lined up with somebody on the waterfall, even if it's not a QSO you're having, uh, then it will be decoded and displayed in this window. Another uh, case is where a call is directed to you. Uh, and if it's directed to you, even if you're not lined up with them on the waterfall, it will still show up here in this window. And finally, uh, anything that you transmit out, just like we transmitted the heartbeat out a while ago, gets populated into this window here. This window is for your outgoing messages. So when you're ready to type, you would just click in here and you're ready to type your message. And finally, over on the right-hand side is the call signs uh, that we have heard so far today. Now, I haven't, uh, I haven't actually heard any call signs yet, uh, but as we do, you'll see them populate over here. All call is here by default, and this is call sign groups. Uh, so this is one that I uh, specifically added. Uh, again, that is in the cell call video, also goes over call sign group. So may, make sure you check out that video as well. All right, so let's go ahead and make our first CQ call and see if we can get an answer here. Uh, as soon as you click the CQ, you'll see that it puts our message that we entered into the settings earlier uh, into here. And I'll go ahead and click the send button. Now you, it depends on how you set it up. It may automatically start transmitting when you enter the CQ or when you hit the CQ button and it may require you to actually hit send before it transmits it. Uh, so that's all in how you configure it under, uh, under the settings. But we'll go ahead and send that out and see if we can't get a reply here. All right, and there on the waterfall, you can see the uh, return for our CQ. Looks like Andy has answered us, N0JPD. And you'll see right here in the receive window who it's coming from and that it's directed to me also you'll see it over here in the activity window and you can also see it over here in the herd call signs uh, and because there's a star beside it uh, that means that he heard us and we're able to hear him and it gives us our signal to noise ratio over here as well now if we want to reply to andy we would just simply click on his call sign to make sure that we are directing the messages to him. And you'll see that it says here uh, to type your outgoing di uh, message, directed message to N0JPD. So we'll just click in that window and we can begin to type. Hit the send button and that message is ready to go. And we could go ahead and begin the QSO with him. All right, so in this case, you can see that Andy is calling CQ right over here. 
Uh, and it's showing up right here. Now, it only shows up in this middle message because we were lined up on the uh, same frequency as him. Uh, but if you wanted to go ahead and reply to that CQ message, um, then you could just highlight his call sign here. And you'll see that the message is going to be directed at him. So we'll wait for his transmission to finish. And it looks like it has because we get the little... Uh, lightning bolt here at the end that indicates that the message has finished coming through uh, we've highlighted his call sign so let's just go ahead and click the reply button and we'll go ahead and hit send so that it will send out our reply and answering CQ is really that simple so you'll be ready to go ahead and start your conversation uh, after you've answered that CQ Okay, so now let's take a look at some of the directed commands that we can do. Uh, you can come up to any call sign that you see on the right-hand uh, side window and right-click on those, and we're going to say directed to N0JPD. And for right now, let's just go ahead and ask him what our signal report is. So you come down here and click this one. What is my signal report? SNR question mark. And as long as his station is in auto mode, then we will get an automatic response from his station. So we'll go ahead and send that out and wait for the response to come back in. All right, there on the waterfall, you can see uh, his station is automatically replying and letting me know that my signal to noise ratio is plus 12. Not bad for 5 watts. All right, so let's see what else we might, uh, what other information we might get from him. And you don't have to be lined up exactly on the waterfall with him. Uh, since I know his station is transmitting there, I'll just move over to, uh, to this side of the waterfall a little bit. But let's go ahead and this time we'll do another directed message to him. And maybe ask him um, his uh, QTH. So let's go ahead and ask for his QTH. We'll send that out and wait for his station to reply automatically. All right, and there again, uh, around 1,200 on the waterfall, you can see his uh, station starting to automatically reply, and it's giving me his QTH information. So it'll take it probably at least two, maybe three transmit cycles uh, to get all of the information, but you can see it's starting to decode right here in the middle of the screen. All right, so another handy feature to know about uh, is being able to ask other stations if they can hear a particular station. You might find this useful if maybe you want to get a message to a buddy of yours, but you can't hear him direct. You can use another station to relay a message to him, but you need to know who else can hear that station. So to do that, we'll right-click on All Call and say Directed to All Call. And then we're going to come down to Heartbeat Request uh, Call Sign. So we'll click on that, and you'll notice that it automatically populates it into our outgoing box. And we'll replace that call sign. Uh, in this case, I'll just use my own call sign since I know Andy can hear me. And then we'll go ahead and transmit that out. All right, and you'll see that his station did acknowledge uh, that it could hear KM4ACK. So now I could use Andy's station uh, as a relay point to relay a message through him. Uh, and you'll see that he is hearing me at plus 11. So if it was another station other than myself, it would tell me uh, that he was hearing that station and how well he was hearing that station. And then I would know that I was able to use Andy's station to relay a message to someone else. Okay, and finally today, I want to take a look at saved messages. Uh, save messages can really be helpful when you're doing uh, maybe the same message over and over. Maybe a little bit about your rig or your antenna or something like that. It's similar to macros in PSK31 if you're familiar with that. 
Uh, so you can click here and you'll notice I only have one uh, saved message so far. This is the default one. Uh, thanks 73 and good luck. Uh, but there's two different ways we can add messages uh, to the saved message section. So the first one is obviously just clicking edit saved messages and then you could add it here uh, and it would be saved. The second way to add a saved message uh, is once you've typed something here, you have the option of clicking on saved and save current message. So once you click the saved current message, whatever was in your outgoing message box would be a new saved message. So we'll just delete that and then you can see right here that's what I had just typed in, and if I click on it, it will auto-populate in the outgoing message box. All right, guys, hope this helps you uh, get started using JS8 Call. It's a really, really cool piece of software. Uh, thanks to Jordan for bringing it to us. We will see you guys on the next video, 7-3.